4,000 years of continuous history, they have never waged a war of conquest. They're that sort of people. They developed the art of printing from movable type. They invented the mariner's compass, without which no ocean could be crossed. They were among the first astronomers, and their observations of the stars and planets made possible the accurate measuring and recording of time. They are that sort of people. And why do we call our dishes China? Because the Chinese invented the art of making porcelain. And as we all know, they invented gunpowder, not as a weapon of war. To celebrate their holidays and religious festivals. And it was one of China's great philosophers who, 500 years before the birth of Christ, gave mankind these words. What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. They are that sort of people, enriching the world in which we live. Yes, China is incredibly old, incredibly big, incredibly populous. Yet it was until recently a land with which few of us concerned ourselves. But now a great change has taken place. China is now our fighting ally. Or more accurately, we are China's. For China has been fighting our enemy, Japan, for seven long years. Why is this? Why have the Chinese, who in all their 4,000 years of history have never waged an aggressive war, been forced to fight? To fight and die by the millions. Because China is land. Four million square miles of it. And because China is people, 450 million of them. And because Japan had a plan to use them both. That plan was finally stated in the Tanaka Memorial, a blueprint for world conquest, formulated in 1927 by Baron Gishi Tanaka, the Japanese foreign minister. In order to conquer the world, we must first conquer China. Here was their mad dream. Phase one, the conquest of Manchuria for raw materials. Phase two, the absorption of China for manpower, piece by piece, so as not to arouse the rest of the world. Phase three, a triumphant sweep to the south to seize the riches of the Indies. Phase four, the eastward move to crush the United States. One fact was obvious. China was to be the giant back on which Japan would ride to world conquest just as Russia was to be enslaved for German use. Second reason lies in the uses each country made of our Western civilization. Let's see what China took. You will notice that this is a very old piece of film. Actually, it is more than 30 years old, and it shows a very great man by the name of Sun Yat-sen. In 1911, this man fathered a people's revolution, which brought to an end China's ancient imperial government and began its new era as a modern republic. Winning for himself in Chinese history as secure a place as George Washington has in ours. And he and his followers chose for the cornerstone of their new republic Chinese words that echoed those of another believer in democracy. Of the people, by the people. And to make these principles become reality, they built more schools and colleges. They established scholarships so that their young men and women could go forth to the universities of America and Europe and bring back to their own country other Western ideas. And this new generation returned to China with new techniques of industry, architecture, science, medicine. They built more hospitals to free their people from the blight of disease. They introduced compulsory education. They laid down as essential two of the four freedoms for which we fight today. Freedom of expression and freedom of religion. In 1925, Sun Yat-sen died, but his disciples, led by Chiang Kai-shek, carried on his monumental work. Their aim, the unification and modernization of China. Chinese industry was old-fashioned and inefficient. Transportation was slow and inadequate. But now railroads began to link the great seaports and river harbors with the inland cities. 
a network of highways began to stretch beyond the railroad line. In their occupation of Nanking, the Japs again outdid themselves in barbarism. The helpless populace was trapped by the city walls and could not flee. The Japanese soldiers went berserk. They raped and tortured. They killed and butchered. One of the bloodiest massacalization against barbarism, good against evil. Upon their victory depends the future of mankind. We in China, like you, want a better world. Not for ourselves alone, but for all mankind. And we must have it. <laughs> 